and I have work on Unibro immunologist aspects. So it is an additional work due to my PhD. And we here in our laboratory we focus on various aspects of immuno degenerative diseases. And we try to understand the mechanisms involved in the brain pathology, including traumatic brain injury, stroke, eczema, etc. Okay, so in this in this uh, study, we are uh, targeted on neuroblastoma. Okay, it is an aggressive uh, cancer of nerve cells, and it involves uh, unregulated proliferation as well as differentiation. During cancer development, these uh, cells actually do not have control on their proliferation as well as differentiation, and this involves uh, uh, each and every tissue of our body and the Stem cell is responsible for the differentiation of specific cells. In neuroblastoma, the cells of uh, neural crystals are uh, undergo undifferentiation mechanism, and the uh, culprit of this uh, neuroblastoma is the cancer stem cell, which uh, originates from the subset of self renewing cells in our brain. And it mostly causes 15% uh, of the cancer deaths uh, in children actually below 15 years. And uh, the mechanism on this involves the amplification of the oncogenes in the cells. So uh, we thought that, we hypothesized that, we, suppose we target these major culprits of the neuroblastoma, that is cancer stem cells, and we suppose we have to stop proliferation and we can stop metastasis somehow. So we have to decide that so we have to apply some hydrochemicals to target this cancer cancer. And so we found this differentiation therapy, uh, which consists of application of phytochemicals to induce differentiation in this uh, cancer cancer. So this is the mechanism of development of tissue developed neural cells. This neural cluster is actually converted into the neuroblast and finally develop into the tumors. So these cancer senses, uh, recent studies have shown that these cancer senses are responsible for development of trauma, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. neuroblastoma, these are the cell renewing cells, and whenever they lose control of the cell cycle, uh, and the differentiation, they develop the neurospheres, and uh, these are the symptoms include this, uh, the, this, this, you can see the eye symptoms of uh, development of neuroblastoma in humans. So uh, currently there are various strategies to uh, treatment for this uh, neuroblastoma including the high dose of psychotropic chemotherapy, uh, surgery and injection. However, these are have very short or long time study side effects. So we have selected a phytochemical for bioparvoid which is an alkaloid found in many plants. And it is used for as a form of against various metabolic diseases, neurodegenerative diseases and cancer. And previously it has shown various anti-cancer activity against various types of cancer. However, its mechanism of action and efficacy against neuroblastoma is not explored. So our objective of this study was to check the anti and differentiation potential of the buffering against human neuroblastoma cells. We have uh, checked our uh, cell cycle as well as apoptosis pathways, actually, actually molecular pathways involved in the regulation of neuroblastoma development. So we have used the uh, SHS by uh, human neuroblastoma cells in this study. Again, for proliferation and plating efficacy, again, measured by MTT and collagen acid. Again, and apoptosis uh, analysis was also done. Now, close cytometry was used for the stem cycle analysis. And various Western blood experiments were done to analyze the kinetic signaling pathways. In the first uh, experiment, we found that Berberine treatment uh, significantly inhibits the proliferation of neuroblastoma. Cells. Along with this, they also induce the expression of uh, neuronal uh, markers in uh, neuroblastoma cells. You can see that 
Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Seema Nirangabha from Shah University. I am postdoctoral research fellow uh, awarded by UGC. I am going to present my topic that is National Ambient Radiation Study around Leta to Nuclear Power Plant Site, Maharashtra. This is the outline of my presentation. First, introduction, materials, and maker. There are three, uh, uh, three methods I have used. Environmental dosimetry, direct radiation survey, or radiation study. Uh, research and discussion about these uh, three surveys and makes conclusions and judgments and links and some important results. Introduction about my topic natural radiation. Of all, we are going uh, exposing to the natural radiation continuously and total dose per capita, the world average of the natural radiation. It is also called as the environmental background radiation, which is 2.4 millijoules per year. We get continuous exposed to the natural sources of radiation as well as the anthropogenic sources of radiation. But we will get amazed that we are getting exposed to the natural sources of radiation with percentages 97.7%. And anthropogenic sources of radiation, there is only 2.3%. The aim of this study was to develop best friend data on natural ambient radiation for the Sapu Nuclear Corporation site, uh, Corporation site, Maharashtra, India. And the significance of this study was they have obtained the uh, best friend radiation uh, data for the uh, yes, Sapu Nuclear Corporation site. This study area which, uh, which is shown in the next figure, uh, in this uh, figure number one. We have carried out for, uh, the, for the period of period of the study was 2012 to 13 for the environmental documentary. Indoor and outdoor radiation survey was carried out for this period. The selected villages are also shown in the next table. These are the 18 villages for which we have carried out the environmental radiation documentary survey. And we have used the thermal dimension dosimeters for the uh, for this study that is the calcium sulfate dysphorium is the shown here. Here we can found that the two white color bricks, these are made up of the calcium sulfate dysphorium bricks. These bricks have the capacity to absorb the radiation, especially gamma radiation. And then these bricks are heated by using the thermal dimension laser. The uh, what, uh, whatever the energy absorbed by this bricks can be in form of the Next is the direct radiation survey. Direct radiation survey was carried out using the instrument that is the thermoscientific radar key model survey meter. This, uh, this was specially designed by the thermoscientific company for the gamma radiation survey. Here, the total number of the readings at each location, we have to take the five readings so that uh, the average can be taken because this is the instantaneous reading measurement. And the annual effective dose from these readings can be calculated. And by using this, by, by using this annual effective dose, the uh, problems or the exposure, what type, what type of exposure, what type of amount of exposure can be uh, can be defined. This is the formula for the annual effective dose. That is E millijoules per year. E is the annual effective dose. B is the absorbed radiation in years. It is always expressed in nanometer per hour. Then the 8760 is the time required for the absorbance of radiation. Then 0 0.2, 0 0.2 is the occupancy factor for the outdoor. And next is the 0 0.7, this is the factor given by the UNS here, that is the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Atomic Radiation. This is the 0 0.7 for the adult people. And then the conversion from the nanograde to the gray, frequency can be to minus 6. Then we have also carried out this soil radioactivity study. For this soil radioactivity study, we have carried, uh, we have sampled around 50 uh, samples, we have the sample, soil samples. Amount of the sample was taken to 80. It was dried by using the uh, open, by using an open at 100 degrees Celsius for 24 hours and crushed to uh, pass through 70 millimeter mesh to, to homogenize it. Then it is filled in the plastic container and left <coughs> at least one. It was left for at least one month so that the proteins uh, which are uh, obtained from the uranium or any other radioactive element in the form of a radon and its liquid product should be maintained in the area. The gamma spectrometry measurements of the activity 
concentrations of the uranium 233 in uh, sodium 232 and potassium A43 is the naturally occurring radiation in the earth's crust and the earth. These are the results and discussions of the metallurgy. The readings are shown in the table number 2 and the table number 2 is specially for the ring or gamma radiation level. We have we had kept the uh, splendid ring or cooling or conditions for the period of uh, one year. And the quarters are made like a monsoon winter, spring and summer. Uh, for some circumstances, we cannot know the reading for the summer season. Uh, these are the uh, reading for the monsoon winter and the spring. Five grades are completed. Uh, from this uh, from this uh, table, we can notice that the Pombe village has the highest reading that is uh, 935 micrograde per year, and annual effect will go up to zero point. And Wada village has noted the 576 micrograde per year and the annual efficiency goes up to 0 0.30. The distribution of outdoor gamma radiation is also shown in the uh, table number 3. Here we can uh, found that the outdoor village has shown the annual dose of 440 micrograde per year and the average uh, uh, 102 micrograde per 19 days. And the uh, highest rating shown by the mid dawn is the Micrograde per year for the annual rating dose and 0.91 milliwatt per year for the annual rating. This is the seasonal duration shown by the absorbed dose rate around the Here we can notify that for the winter season, the readings are shown highest by both the uh, for both the conditions that is indoor and outdoor conditions. For the indoor conditions in the winter season, the readings are shown highest before the low radiation rate.
is a thermometer ring for indoor and outdoor. It also has a taken ring for indoor and outdoor thermometer. You can notice that indoor and outdoor has shown the highest uh, highest ring for indoor condition, and the on relay has shown the lowest uh, ring for the uh, uh, indoor condition. Indoor relay should be for how much limit we have kept our in the, our uh, PLD. Uh, um, we have taken the meter reading. It is made up of the local uh, rocks that is the red uh, Dhamba rock, as well as the And the most 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 how how can we take care? We have taken the meter reading. It was made up of the. It is it is the outdoor condition. The maximum reading is found to be ten point six feet. The maximum reading is four point zero feet. Another reading was. Minimum is six point eighty six and two point two eight. This is much for the you can know that the all the annual average doses calculated for the seven meter readings are also found within the limit that is the one millimeter. As we have uh, found that the natural radiation mainly depends on geographical as well as the geological conditions. As the natural radiometer radiation radiometer is found and the data of nuclear for uh, nuclear power plant site which are used to catalyze like uh, the continuum of type O1 granite and nickel and granite is one of the easier blocks which transport uh, which is composed and it is enriched with uranium and sodium for an average calcium of uranium and 15 lithium of sodium hence the composition of a granite rock is responsible for the exposure due to uranium and sodium Next is uh, soil radiation study. We have already published this soil radiation study in the radiation protection dosing review journal, that is one of the Oxford journals, where we can count we have taken readings for the 50 soil samples from the 50 villages around the state of the Oxford site. We can note down that in the control village, the sodium 232 has shown the readings around 115.05. Preference for KG and potassium for 600 milligram. And the Sonore, which is the village, from the lowest mix, meaning that is 8.69 hectares per kg for uranium and 21.36 kg for sodium. Now we have ten minutes of completing. Formulate the two formulas used for the calculation of absorption dose rate and the annual dose in the formula. The calculation has been done. Okay, thank you, ma'am. 
If anybody is having poster presentation, please go and seminar hall to upstairs. If anybody is having poster presentation today, please uh, the evaluation is started there. Please go and seminar hall too. Okay, next candidate, Toravne Sarika. Yes, I yes. Water and then dry at 42 degrees Celsius in one for about two days. 
After that, you can uh, to make fine powder in this preparation. 5 grams, 25 grams, and 50 grams of dry milk powder that is DLP. Into 50 ml of distilled water were added and shake for shake and shaker for 4 half, 8 half, 4 half, 16 half, 20 half, and 24 half. Inclusion. Germinating trials were conducted in autoclave petri dishes. 15 kits of Vigna Madiata were kept on germinating paper in each petri dish. Germinating, germinating percentage. Effect of element treatment is effect of all element treatments, including control, were studied on germination <coughs> of Vigna Madiata kits at 3 days after sowing and 5 days after sowing. Measurement of human and rice crop. The allopathic effect of features of neonatic consonant layer also study on the growth of growth rate of human and rice at three days after sowing, five days after sowing, seven days after sowing, nine days after sowing, and eleven days after sowing of wheat. This is the table. Uh, here are the treatments on the uh, right hand corner. There, there are eleven treatments. Uh, percent germination uh, at three days uh, after sowing. The percent germination of, of uh, at three days after sowing and five days after sowing, the percent germination of the higher in human treatment that is control that is 98 percent and at uh, five days after sowing is uh, found 100 percent germination. As the concentration of uh, it increases with respect to time, the percent germination should delay in uh, percentage at the uh, treatment treatment number A. Now it's no decreasing, that is 70% and 94% at 3 days and 5 days respectively. But in case of the Five minutes completed now. Uh, at treatment uh, 9, 10 and 11, it shows uh, show that there is no just germination with respect to half and uh, 25 gram powder and 50 gram powder. Uh, similar result also that the uh, length of human and length of the radical is limited. And three days uh, after sowing, were after that, in treatment uh, first, that is control, it show higher uh, length, that is 2.5 cm uh, in uh, three days, and when five days, 3.75 cm. Uh, same result were well observed that at the uh, concentration of heat uh, increases with respect to time and uh, uh, concentration of powder, uh, the length of luminous and length of radical get decreasing. And in the same uh, 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 same result was observed at the uh, treatment time, 10 and 11, there was no seed germination due to strong aromatic effect of uh, these leaches. Uh, at 5 days after sowing, the length of fluid and length of radical in centimeters were observed uh, at the treatment point 8.2 cm and uh, 5.2 cm at 5 days after sowing were observed. Uh, greatest uh, length of uh, that uh, female and radical uh, as the treatment was uh, as the concentration uh, gets increasing uh, the length of radical and female gets decreasing at the same observation as observed at uh, 7 days 9 days the length of female and length of radical gets mm -hmm. uh, decreasing with respect to time concentration and uh, uh, powder uh, and uh, uh, concentration uh, but same observation or observed at the uh, human treatment, the highest the constant, uh, highest uh, measurement was observed at 9 days. Uh, and at 11 days, the length of human and length of radical were observed highest in treatment one, that is 18.9 cm and 4.27 cm were observed. And uh, as the time and uh, concentration of features increases, the uh, length of human and length of radical get decreases. But in treatment T9, T10, and T11, that is 25 gram of dry milk powder, uh, is for 40 uh, and 50 gram uh, dry milk powder at 12 half, 50 gram dry milk powder at uh, 22 half show, uh, no seed germination that show strong aromatic effect. This value is mentioned in this table as uh, uh, standard deviation with four repetition. These are the photographs that uh, showed. Uh, mm -hmm. Length of a plumule and radical uh, shows increasing and uh, decreasing as concentration and uh, uh, concentration of regions uh, increasing. Visual and description. 
different concentration of ether shows significant effect on generation of protein. That is in our data. At 5 gram, uh, 12 hour, and 25 gram at 12 hour, concentration level shows delay the germination, and 100% germination was observed at 5 days after sowing. Uh, 25 gram at 25 hour, and uh, 50 gram at 12 hour, and 24 hour. Uh, drying powder <coughs> had strong and effect on seed germination. Growth of primula radical were found maximum in converting all elevated plants. Concentration of high gram plant material for 12 and 24 half decreased tumor growth rate compared to the control in all six observation taken at 3 days after sowing, 7 days after sowing, 9 days after sowing, and 11 days after sowing. Conclusion. The study of aromatic potential of neonatal will be useful for the management of cultivated crop. Mechanism of different aromatic effects can open opportunities for crop restoration and weed management, that is, herbicides, fungicides, and pesticides we can make from this. These are some references. Acknowledgement. I would like to thank you to uh, HOD, Department of Botany, for the University University. For messages, uh, for providing me necessity facility. And I would like to thank you for thank you to the uh, delegates present on the dais and of the dais to give me the opportunity to explain this. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. Uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, questions? Okay, thank you. If anyone here is having oral presentation and poster presentation today, please go upstairs on seminar hall in seminar hall one because evaluation is started there. If anyone is having poster presentation or seminar or oral presentation today, please evaluation is started. Next candidate, Vadaukar DS. Vadaukar DS. Vadaukar DS. Okay, that this candidate is not here. Next, uh, next candidate is Harshita Gowda. Like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, 
So it was uh, something which was granted in families always seen in uh, uh, inverted commas as an important family for uh, different uh, research purposes. So the most important feature of Brassica family is that it contains a component or a compound called as glucosinolate. Now this glucosinolate is like has the feature of having antibacterial, antifungicidal properties in them. So the isolation of this compound would be very beneficial to develop uh, any fungicide or bactericide uh, compounds. So this is what is glucosinolate compound. It is a it contains a thiosulfate group and an R group which uh, depends what type of glucosinolate it will be for that. Now, what I did in my lab was I I I, I uh, like collected uh, the seeds of this cardamine hirsuta, cultivated them, and then I started the process to which uh, I had to study for the different growth parameters. So first one which I gave the stress was salinity stress. Uh, then uh, I went for ascorbic acid stress and the last one was since I have uh, in my college a phytolytic water, wastewater treatment plant. So we did wastewater uh, treatment and uh, your multiple water, different types of water treatment also on this field. And this plant is uh, established by Neely in our college. Uh, so this plant is one time installment and uh, it's done under the guidance of uh, BD. So this uh, phytolytic treatment usually is done without any chemical compounds. Any aquatic and aquatic plants are present in them. So using these plants, the treatment is done of the wastewater from different labs. Okay, so first when I wanted to do salinity stress on cardamine, so cardamine mitsuta is not, no, I actually to say there is very less research done on this plant. It is an ideal plant if you want to go ahead with research. So when we wanted to know something more about Hirsuta, there was very less on the internet. So we started with a base study and this is what different stresses we were giving to the plant. So for salinity, we, we studied the related species, but not for the cardamom and Hirsuta we found anything. So related species of Brassica family showed that when they are supplied with excessive of salt stress, they undergo a decrease in protein content and uh, there is extremely negative impact on their osmotic potential. Uh, in ascorbic acid, when you supply them exogenously, uh, what happens is it is beneficial for the brassica family plant and it shows an increase in the protein content, photosynthesis and helps in the cell proliferation. Whereas when you uh, start, uh, when you supply the plant with different types of water treatment, so it happens that the pigments present in the plants are getting diminished or decreased. So my aim was to study basically the different growth parameters using these three sources of materials and methods. Uh, uh, basically, we collected the plant, uh, the plant samples from uh, our campus. That is the uh, Army National College in Bandra. And uh, then preparation and all, we, uh, we just collected 300 seed samples and then uh, sold them, grew them in normal controlled environment. And then the treatments, what was important was given differently for different set of plants. So, salinity, different concentration we chose by reference was 60 millimolar, 120 millimolar, and 240 millimolar. So, I mean, so for so a 0.1, 0.5 and 1 millimolar and water that we used was treated, uh, untreated and uh, normal tap water. So we did a protein estimation by normal Bradford method that was normally practiced in our lab. As far as we did it to use a DCPIP uh, photometric method and the uh, photosynthetic pigments was measured by human spectrophotometer. This was the protein standard and the ascorbic standard. Now these are the three uh, different NAP or uh, salt stress uh, samples of parliament in Suta. So every alternate five days we were taking the photographs and the readings of uh, 
protein content as carbon content and pigment. So you see in the day five, there is normal, uh, there is already deterioration in 240 millimolar. That is, it cannot bear the cold stress. As in, when you go to 20 stress, it is uh, 250 millimolar and completely shown dead. Whereas 25 uh, on the 25th day of 60 millimolar of salt, that is, it is cold stress on bearable by the plant. This was the protein content and ascorbic content of other in the population. For the ascorbic acid, the growth of the plant was seen fantastic. It was showing a positive effect right up to the 25th day. Uh, for the wastewater treatment, uh, uh, with the water, different water stress was given, tap water showed a media, uh, normal controlled uh, growth, whereas the untreated water, the dirty water, or the uh, sewage water was showing the best result for patamine using And again, you can see the uh, ascorbic acid content, which is uh, very important for the plant for the growth, is also present in high concentration. So, what happened in salinity stress? We came to the conclusion that patamine using is not a plant which can grow in saline soil. This means uh, 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 soil which is uh, not Present with a uh, lot of NAC and salts in there. So it is, it is a plant which will be growing well where the salt stress is uh, not, not much. And uh, it should good in 60 millimolar. Maybe the lower concentration will be more beneficial but not the higher concentration. For the ascorbic acid, the lower concentration point one was best suitable for paradigm risuta. And uh, the growth was seen extremely uh, like uh, the you can see you see the life cycle completing very fast compared to the other uh, concentration. And in wastewater treatment, uh, since it is a weed, uh, we see weeds usually growing around the series or the near the near the caps of the uh, the gutters and all. So it was well defined that carbon dioxide grows well in untreated water and it does not need something. Uh, Special kind of water can grow anywhere and everywhere. This is the way it was justified. Uh, okay, so basically, this was just a base study. We are trying to establish Cardamine Hissuta as the model plant because it has shown very much resemblance in Arabidopsis saliana, which is the Glossophila of body. Uh, so, actually, we have conducted three more projects, and uh, that is. It is a very, I mean, this field is really you can work a lot of caravan because the car much is present and anything you do will be mobile in this field. So, as for the base, we study from the last. Thank you, ma'am. Questions? If anybody is having question, discussion session is open. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Now, uh, it's, it is a last but not the least, last presentation for this session. And uh, the last presentation was given by me, myself. And I am ha my time will be going to record by uh, Mr. Gujar, a professor from the Department of Computer Science. Good morning to one and all. Myself, Emi Gurave, Neha Gurave from the Department of Microbiology, Padma Shri Dikhe Patel College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Kragaragal uh, Rooney. Uh, my topic for the discussion or for presentation is Green Synthesis of Nanoparticle from Ossimum Sanctum and its effect uh, against antibacterial effect. Specific, uh, specifically against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Basically, nanobiotechnology is a budding field of biological science which has opened a big door against the methods which are but, uh, uh, previous or uh, we, can, we can say conventional methods. So, our top, from, depending on our topic, 
we have we have uh, synthesized a nanoparticle from green synthesis. As a green synthesis is a diverse industrial application, and we have synthesized the nanoparticle from silver. As silver shows the disinfectant property, it shows antibacterial property, it shows antimicrobial pro property against the pathogenic bacteria. So generally, both the silver compounds are used in a with the antimicrobial coating in catheters, wound dressings, and dental materials. Eco-friendly material like leaf extract, bacteria, fungus, actinomyces uh, can be used for the synthesis of silver nanoparticle because it offers very much numerous benefits as it is eco-friendly its name suggests. Thus, uh, we have synthesized the bioparticle, nanoparticles from lab that is lactic acid bacteria. We have checked the antibacterial activity of uh, Oscillum, sorry, uh, we have synthesized the uh, nanoparticle from Oscillum sanctum, that is the leaf extract. Leaf extract of Oscillum sanctum. Oscillum sanctum is a porous tulsi. It has a very much, very diverse pro antimicrobial property, as we have known. It is used in our day to day life. So we have checked the antimicrobial activity of Oscillum sanctum on Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a nosocomial pathogen. Nosocomial pathogen means it is there, it is commonly found in hospital. It is it causes hospital burn infection. Basically, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is an opportunistic, opportunistic pathogen. We have isolated that pseudomonas, uh, the strain of pseudomonas aeruginosa from the burn patients because burn patients are more susceptible to this type of nosocomial infection and ultimately if it is un left untreated or if it causes death of the patient. So we have used a sanctum phantom against the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Along with that, we have an approach that so many pathogens are there which show multiple drug resistance. That means resistance to many antibacterial drugs. So it was one of the objective to check the antimicrobial activity against that Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So as we know, it is a uh, you can say it as a Oscillum sanctum, um, you can say it as a, uh, a Vardhan. It is a Vardhan for, uh, uh, from the Indian Ayurveda. As uh, our guest lecturer has discussed uh, yesterday, chief guest, Dr. Dilip Gargir, that we have very much treasure of, uh, Ayur, uh, of medicines in Ayurveda, but we don't know or we ignore the effect. So, one of the Vardhan is uh, Oscillum sanctum. So, how we synthesize this nanoparticle from Oscillum sanctum leaves? We have synthesized it. We take a dried leaf extract. 7 gram of dried leaf leaf extract is boiled for 5 minutes. After that, we filter that extract with Gottman filter paper 1. That clear leaf extract is mixed with 0.75 millimolar kg NO3, that is silver nitrate, and we give it. The synthesis of nanoparticle is indicated by color change. And after that, we have done the basic characterization of that nanoparticle that, uh, by UV visible spectrophotometer. Have been within the wavelength of 200 to 700 nanometer. The screening of uh, five minutes is over. Thank you, sir. The screening of pseudomonas uh, aeruginosa is done as per determinative manual of bacteriology, and we compare that screen with uh, with the standard strain of pseudomonas aeruginosa, that is ATCC 27853. After that. How we check the antibacterial activity of pseudomonosa? Uh, we have uh, uh, nucleate agar is, uh, we, uh, we perform agar 
well diffusion is your agar bioassay method in that we have prepared the well and added different microgram per liter super ml solution of that nanoparticle along with that we have added the sort of uh, the concentrations of pseudomonas and it shows the uh, and we check the antibacterial activity after uh, the expo or uh, what are the results we have observed this results the reduction of silver nanoparticle is observed with from 15 minutes to 3 hours from 3 hours the color change is start from 15 hours starting from 15 minutes the color change is started after that we have uh, um, performed the uv spectrometer spectrometry it shows the uh, uh, increasing value these are the results 0 minutes 15 minutes 1 hour 3 hour 2 hour you can visit visit uh, visualize the changes and at a uh, at highest concentration that is at 3 hour we get highest peak and the range of the concentration is uh, 200 to 400 microgram per ml Results. Now, uh, what we have concluded is it offers a valuable contrib uh, contribution in biomedicine, and hence um, it shows the application to control the bunbon infection. And uh, the highest peak is observed at 450 nanometer within three or of the uh, three or of uh, period. And uh, as I am saying again and again, it shows a potent antibacterial activity. It uh, basically chemical agents, जो interference करते हैं cells के साथ में, वो interference को inhibit करने का काम ये silver nitrate करता है. The silver uh, it inhibits the interference. So uh, hence it is a promising approach to decrease the bunbon infection, which is caused by um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa or opportunistic pathogen or nosocomial infections. So our future aspect is to further characterize the synthesized nanoparticle, and we again want to check the multiple drug resistance and uh, the effect of this. nanoparticle on the pathogen which is showing multiple drug resistance these are the references and thank you if uh, anybody is having question they can ask any questions thank you uh, now may i request uh, professor bina rani ma'am to honor uh, dr rash sir for being the chairperson of this emphasis competition of our session <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. And our request, Dr. Arti Borse sir, to honor Dr. Manish sir. Thank you, 
Thank you, sir. Now, uh, this young scientist competition award session is over. Uh, poster presentations are displayed on the first uh, floor. So, if you are interested, you can go for uh, watching those uh, posters. And after that, at uh, one o'clock, we'll go for the lunch. And then, after the lunch, we'll have one uh, last plenary session. And after that, there will be the line. Thank you. Uh, one more another thing. We are going to distribute the prizes for poster as well as oral presentations and young scientists competition. So please wait for the valid function because you might get you know, those who have presented their posters or oral, they might have the prizes. Thank you.